We are live and we are here today to talk to you about, sorry, I can't hit all those tabs, <laughs> to talk to you today about MakeCode Arcade and Makey Makey. So I am Colleen Graves and I'm here with Derek Rinberg, who is our, um, I'd say nobody's the- Wait, how'd you here. say my last name? Oh, I said it bad. Yes, you did. I'm not saying it again. Derek Runberg. I said rune, didn't I? Like yes, a rune. I wanted okay. to make you like Middle Earthen. A Middle okay, Earthian. That's cool. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk to you. Oh, you're not new to us anymore. You've been with us for a year. No. Um, director of product partnerships. Um, we all wear many hats. We all do a thousand things. So, um, and if you've seen me before, I make the majority of our content and share crazy ideas with teachers and we um, come up with professional development too, both of us together, and we're here to talk to you about our new MakeCode Arcade extension, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I feel like I've been wanting that to happen the entire five years I've been with the team. So, Derek, over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Colleen, and hello, everybody. Um, Colleen, one thing that this does do for us is it kicks off our webinar season, right? Ooh, yes. So people have been hanging out, doing stuff, having fun in the summer. And as weather starts to get a little chillier, we get into classrooms, get busy and webinar. That means for us, it's webinar season. Um, yeah. so it kicks off uh, <laughs> webinars. Um, we're filling up our calendar for the next month or two in terms of webinars. So be sure to check our website um, and our events calendar for all of the different webinars and things going on. I'm actually going to mention two at the end because um, we have two really good ones coming up. But it, this also kicks off Makey Makey and computer science and seeing how we can use Makey Makey with some of those um, computer science fundamentals. Um, we are going to talk about Scratch today, too. We're going to talk about Make Code. We're, we really have some, some ideas brewing, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Perfect. So let's jump in. Um, so for this webinar, we're going to talk about, like Colleen said, what is, first of all, if you've never heard of Make Code Arcade, we're going to talk about that, get you a at least 10,000 foot view of it, um, do a quick demo and get into it. Um, a, we're going to also talk about a younger young inventor's approach to computer science with Makey Makey and Make Code together. So we've been doing a lot of stuff with Scratch over the past couple of years. Um, really since the invention of Makey Makey. Um, but we're going to see what that looks like in terms of make code as well. And then we're going to explore different game controllers and projects that Colleen has created, um, as well as some other people out there in terms of projects. So um, sit back, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Colleen will help out with answering that. And I will too, if I, I see it. But um, we're going to take a look at both of these things and then how they fit together in terms of uh, Makey Makey and Make Code Arcade. Yeah, and we're going to share the little recording on our website when we're done. And if you, like Derek said, if you have any questions, um, type them directly in chat. You can type them in chat. You won't have to use the Q&A. And we like to, someone did it right when I, when, when we, when I said that. Um, we also... Um, love having an active participation in chat. So we'll just start chatting, say hello, um, tell us if you use Make Code Arcade. And um, sorry, my kid came in and tried to give me some snack. Um, I feel like there's one other thing. Oh, make sure it's set to everyone so that you're not just typing to me and Derek yeah. if you're typing in chat. Yep. All right. Um, so one of the things that we started exploring, um, I would say, Colleen, what do you think, past four months is formalizing our approach to computer science with mm -hmm. Makey Makey. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've settled on is that there's two parts to 21st century inventing um, in, a, in a lot of ways. There's the physical invention, the piece of hardware, and that's really easy to prototype with Makey Makey, right? We can, we all know the alligator clips and cardboard and aluminum foil. Um, but then there's the other half of this, which is the digital side of things, digital programming, which is the software side of this world. And when we talk about physical things, sometimes those we are programming the physical thing that we're inventing, but we're also can be programming something like a game that our physical invention interacts with or controls. 
So really, computer science and programming is half the battle when we're talking about invention. So one of our approaches, and again, this is one of our approaches. This is not our, we're not jumping in with both feet, putting all our eggs in one basket. This is one of our approaches for that for computer science is through game design and game controllers, because we can design a physical thing and design and program and create the, um, sorry, I was looking at chat and create games in a very easy way. It gives a focus and a challenge to student projects. So it's a balanced approach, both in terms of skill and conceptual development. So the things that Makey Makey brings to the table that we've always had, it's been problem solving, iteration and tinkering and exploration, bringing Makey Makey where it's like, I can iterate ideas very, very quickly. It's probably one of the best rapid prototyping platforms that you can find out there for the classroom because all I'm doing is alligator clipping it. And if it doesn't work the way I want it, I can unalligator clip it, tape stuff, all that stuff, and it just works. Um, and then it makes coding physically tangible without making it physically frustrating. And what I mean by that is I don't have to like learn the in-depths of electronics to get something to work. So I don't have to learn about resistors and transistors and breadboarding and all that stuff to get a prototype up and running with a game controller. Um, so that's that's the main thing is it's making it physically tangible without physically frustrating. That sounds nice that way you put that physically tangible without physically. I know. It was like my morning thing during coffee this morning and I was like, yeah. wow, that just makes sense. It makes sense and it and it and sometimes coding can be frustrating and so yeah. can certain projects. So the idea of, of doing it in a way that's not as good. Um, and by the way, I fixed chat, everyone. It was, I don't know why it was disabled. But it's okay. It's abled, it's abled now. Yeah. Now it can be a conversation. <laughs> um, a couple of things that Makey Makey brings to the table to help out with, because it's not, Makey Makey is not separate from computer science. Um, it is not, I'm doing computer science and then I do Makey Makey. What you can learn is kind of the learning outcomes from Makey Makey is that idea of physical logic. If I press this, something happens. Or if I press these two things, this happens. Or if I don't press it, what happens? Um, you learn about inputs and outputs. The idea of event-based programming um, is, again, that logic, but understanding that that me by me pressing a button is causing a chain of events to happen. Um, and then we get to introduce physical computing at that point where um, even though we're using Makey Makey as kind of a the conduit between the computer and my physical controller, um, at some point we can graduate from my Makey Makey to something like Arduino or Microbit where we are actually programming the piece of hardware. So. With that being said, contemporary video games are designed around a controller, a standard controller, not the controller designed for the game. So, for example, if you take any of your video game platforms right now, my son is actually probably in our house playing his Nintendo Switch. Every single game that is played on that Switch is played with the same controller, the same set of controllers, controls which is fine. That's great for industrial level of, I got to be able to make this for thousands of people to play the game, but it, it opens up an opportunity for us to talk to students about when you're designing your game in software, you can also now, here's this opportunity to design a custom video game controller for it. So this idea as a prompt, working back and forth between designing the piece of software and then how can I creatively change up my controller so that it maybe speaks or becomes part of that game? And Colleen's, some of Colleen's projects that she's going to show at the end of the webinar today are great examples of this. I, um, I think I can't. also like Dave and Buster's and um, Chuck E. Cheese and like 1980s arcades were all about 
controllers that were actually designed to be for the game. Like Dance Dance yeah. Revolution just blew all that out of the water. But if you even, but you can also think back to like controllers that made no sense, like when you had the ball that you would. Oh yeah. You're, you might are you old enough for this? Yeah, we oh, had the cool. ball. <laughs> you had the ball to play skate or die, and you had to like to make your your skater go. You had to like shove your hand. Like some of those games don't make any sense. So um, I would also say that Switch has done a very interesting job of making the controller different. Like you can hold it this way, you can hold it this yeah. way, you can use tilt. Um, I think all that's pretty pretty interesting too. Well, and then when um, when so back to the Wii. Mm -hmm. Right. They like really messed with the controller. And what happened was that people weren't oh. used to how that controllers, how to control games that way. And so they ended up throwing their controllers through their TV oh, yeah, or, the Wiimote. Windows or, you know, hitting the person playing next to them and sending them to the emergency room. When you're like, playing tennis. And you're yeah. Through the yeah. So it, it's like there's this design um, balance that I think is a great opportunity for students and most students, I'm not going to say all students, but most students at least are entertained by video games. And so there's a sense of personal connection to what they're designing rather than trying to solve world hunger or something like that. Right. Where it's, it's difficult to, we haven't solved that as a society. So we shouldn't be asking our students to do that, but right. I think it's something simple um, and approachable for students. Um, so again, make, like this shows, Makey Makey allows us to create your own controller for your own game. So we're designing both sides of it. And, and that's kind of the biggest thing that we're trying to get at. And in the past, and we're going to compare and contrast this now, in the past we've had in terms of programming and, and writing code in CS, it's been, we've really leaned on Scratch as our platform because it's so approachable. And Colleen, can you talk a little bit about just our past with Scratch and, and how we've used that as a company? Yeah. Um, as our, our CS platform? Um, I was going to say it earlier, so I'm glad you asked me now because I didn't interrupt you earlier. I did a really good job keeping myself from interrupting you. But um, uh, Jay Silver and Eric Rosenbaum were on the original Scratch team. So um, they, a lot of times, I think they've changed all the noises now, but in Scratch 2.0, you could actually like, the scream was Jay Silver screaming and, and sometimes laughing. And so it'd be really fun felt like he was in your living room, but we have been very um, lean, leaning on Scratch for so long because of that connection. They feel like peanut butter and jelly. They go together really well. Um, it's really easy to code um, animations and videos and not videos, but animations and stories and games in Scratch. And we, um, we love it. Uh, and lately we're noticing a lot of school districts are blocking it because of the community aspect. Uh, but we know kids love it. Um, and we had wanted to be on Make Code, like I said before, we just weren't able to be on Make Code. Um, because like when Make Code came out, it just worked with Microbit. It didn't have all these other things. And so Make Code Arcade is a little bit different um, because it actually puts a visual up and you can make games that you can see um and play. And um, I think you guys are really gonna like it if you haven't seen it before. Yeah. And so if you don't know, so Scratch, we have an extension for Scratch, um, which mm -hmm. is just two blocks. It's two hat blocks, um, which allows you to map an event or trigger an event when keys on the Makey Makey are pressed. Mm -hmm. um, so we've we had that and we've had that relationship with Scratch in the past. Uh, and one of the ways that I try to compare and contrast Scratch with Make Code Arcade is breadth versus depth. Um, so in terms of con what the students are creating, so not necessarily computational concepts, but when mm -hmm. we are looking at if, if you want to give students an more of an open platform of the types yeah. of software they're going to create, Scratch is, is an amazing platform for that. We can make yeah. different software tools, different games, storytelling, all this fun stuff where Make Code Arcade is, as its name implies, is very game centric and game based. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point because it also makes me think of like, um, if I sat down at a table with a blank sheet of paper and watercolors, that's kind of like scratch, right? Like I don't, I am just, the world is open to me. And so as much as I love that, Make Code gives us a little bit more focus, kind of like having a template 
and something mm-hmm. to kind of start with. And so it might reach different kids. Like that's, that's kind of my point here is like scratch okay. is really great for some kids that really love it. Like my daughter loves it, goes in, loves making her own animations. Um, but another, another kid who isn't really as into that, but is into gaming might find that Make Code Arcade is just a little bit more accessible to them. And you'll see in a second too, is that I, I think they, they inhabit different both age groups and uh, grades, age, age slash grade groups mm-hmm. um, in terms of skill sets and foci, fo- foci, foca, focus foci, <laughs> um, for different students. And so you'll see it here in a second. But again, we just wanted to give a really quick example um, of really basic getting scratch the cat to move up, down, left, right with makey, makey, and then playing a sound when um, you hit the space bar or the space Mm -hmm. with makey, makey. So again, very minimal in terms of blocks to get makey, makey integrated into scratch. Mm -hmm. Um, And here's what I was talking about in terms of inhabiting the different platforms and having different grade levels and skill sets for um, students. And part of this is a progression for, for, from us mm-hmm. is that as, as students start to play with making, making third, fourth grade, we really promote. And we think that them focusing on the building aspect and building circuits and cons- physical construction is what they should be focusing on with creatively using our apps. Yeah. Um, so we've created a bunch of different apps over the, the past year beyond our p- piano app that are both classroom tools as well as fun kind of game type app. Uh, Colleen, can you drop the app? Yeah, I'm going to do that. And I was actually going to also say another thing I didn't interrupt you to say earlier. I'm so impressed with myself right now um, is that uh, I think our apps, we started making them, you know, we made the sampler app before you came. And then once you came on, we started making a lot more apps. We've got like, I don't know how many apps are open. We have a lot of apps open. We have a brand new app coming to that I'll I'd sneak peek We might tell you there's going to be an amazing app um, at the end of next month. But to me, they really offer this coding progression because before it was kind of like, okay, we just scratch. We'll just make some stuff and here's some crazy projects we can do. But now we have apps where it can be like, okay, here's a buzzer app. How can I code a buzzer app in scratch? I can move over and do that pretty easy. How can I make up my own piano app in scratch? You know, I so I think that um, our apps are an amazing place to start. Like you said, they can focus on the physical construction. And then as they age up, they can start trying new coding platforms. Yeah. Yeah. And so after after the apps, and at Colleen, I think we're at 14 apps. Yeah, now. I know. Yeah, 14. Wow. Ah. Um, so after, after the apps, about fourth grade, again, this is always about. So don't take this as like a hard line. Um, is that we start to integrate Scratch when students start to transition from learning to read to reading to learn. Mm. And again, that's that fourth grade level. Um, So they can start in Scratch and building building programs and projects with blocks. And then about sixth grade, seventh grade, when it's where teachers are really, I think, hitting, I would say, the conceptual ceiling for Scratch in terms of where do I go now in terms of text-based programming or what language should I pick or choose or teach? There's We get a lot of those questions at about sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where we're saying, hey, jump into Microsoft Make Code Arcade mm-hmm. and start to build. And again, you're programming in blocks and you're programming games. But what I love about Make Code Arcade is that you can flip between blocks and text-based code, both in terms of JavaScript and Python. And if you've never heard of either one of those, they are text-based programming languages that are used by professionals as well as hobbyists all over the world. Um, but the website that you're, the screen you're looking at now is run by JavaScript on the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, so JavaScript is like the functional code. Like when you press a button on a website, it makes things happen. Um, Python is similar. Um, and so we can jump then into Python, JavaScript, processing text-based coding from kind of ninth grade on through high school. So it gives us kind of a nice progression of computer science from being a consumer at one end to being a raw creator at the other end. 
right. Show us make code arcade. Yeah. Yeah, Make Code Arcade. So we, like Colleen mentioned, we have our extension for Make Code Arcade now, and it's just two blocks as well. Um, again, it's block-based programming, similar to Scratch, as well as text-based, both in JavaScript and Python. I and we have all of our... Were... What was that? I almost told you you were. I was like, move forward two slides. I almost yeah. told you to move forward two slides. Okay. And then all of the blocks are color coded, similar to Scratch, in terms of the different tools. Um, we call them, they call them drawers, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Or at least that's what I personally call them. Um, drawers of all these tools. So it's like a toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we broke them down into kind of groupings, six different groupings that we feel are kind of the big six in that each game is going to pull from each of these six in some way, shape, or form. And they pull from them at different skill levels. So it's like a skill level one game will have all of these things in terms of math and variables, logic and loops, sprites and controllers, game info, so on and so forth. Um, and we can actually map different games that the students are creating to these different skill levels. So if you were really wanting to teach level three logic and loops, which is four and while loops, we're going to be able to say, hey, have them or do this lesson around this game um, or do this project around this game. And that's that will be kind of the introduction to that level of logic and loops. Um, and we've been working in all these different games that are super simple games to start with. And then all the way moving through the different game typologies and what are those, what are the programming and computer science elements and understanding that I need to do to be able to create these games while also creating game controllers for them. Will you, will yeah. you stop sharing the slides and open Make Code Arcade and yes. just show how That's easy it is to do? And then, I'll, then I'll show though? the projects. I can still see your screen. Perfect. So this is the MakeCode website. Um, one couple things. MakeCode is arcade, but it's like as we've said before, it's for, originally came from Microbit, and there's also a Minecraft version of MakeCode as well. If you have Minecraft Education Edition, it, there's it's a plugin allows students to create mods and things like that. But we're going to work in arcade right now, and we're going to build. I'm going to build just a really quick game. I actually kind of. Can, was working on one, so webinar fun here, but I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna name it, call it webinar fun two. Because, <laughs> you know. Even better than webinar fun one. That's my movie voice. And this is our environment that we're gonna work in. So we have the different drawers, different groupings of different blocks. So if I click on things, you can see all the blocks that I can drag into it. Um, I start with an on start block to start with, obviously, um, and then a simulator on this side here. So this is like, think of it, it's like a simulated Game Boy. And I'm going to build a really quick game. Um, I'm going to, first of all, we need to create a scene. So I'm going to set the background image to something and I'm going to click here. Does that pop up window show yeah, up? Yeah, I can see okay. it. Click on and gallery. I, I'm going to pick. So just so everyone knows, the gallery is similar to the library in yeah. Scratch. They just call it gallery. Yeah. So I need to get some zooms I... out of the way. So I'm going to say, you know what? We're going to be having a game happen in the middle of the freeway. Mm -hmm. And every game needs what's called a sprite or my player. So I am going to bring in a from, again, from sprites set sprite two so i'm creating a sprite and from my gallery again because i don't feel like sitting here and drawing and you probably don't want to watch me draw again mm -hmm. i can pick whatever i want they have all these things that exist already um i am going to pick this cat i almost said cat i know I win Everyone so now, five points i'm a cat in the middle cat. of the freeway <laughs> Kitty! Um, oh no! I know, and if I go over here, I can't, if I click on this and move the arrow keys, or I'm pressing my arrow keys up, down, left, right, my cat doesn't move yet. So I have to say I'm using a specific controller to move with. So I, under controller, I'm going to move my sprite with buttons. 
that's it. It already knows that the buttons are mapped to the arrow keys right now for the most part. So I can come over back over to my simulator and now my cat moves. With your arrow keys. With my arrow keys. Mm -hmm. So technically at this point, Makey Makey just works right there straight up yeah. with the arrow keys. It does. The, the one issue that it didn't work in the past that the R block fixes is the A and B button scenario mm -hmm. here. If I press the space bar right now, notice the A key is being pressed. The problem is B on my keyboard is returned. We don't have it. So R block right. maps space and click to A and B for you. You don't have to go into any settings and change things or remap your makey makey in any way. All and, you have to do. And that other, the second block also will map to any key you want. So you can use the back of the board. So. so I'm going to add the makey makey block now. So I'm going to click advanced and I'm going to click extensions. And I am just going to search makey, oops, makey, if I can type it correctly. And here's our extension. And it adds this green keyboard makey drawer. And as you can see, it's two blocks. And I'm going to grab this top one, use makey makey default keys. And I'm going to put it at the very top. And now if I go back to the game and I have a makey makey plugged in and I'm going to lift this up. So I built a really Ooh. basic joystick. Wait, let me. And now I can move my cat around my the freeway and hey, Derek, card. will you full screen the cat while you do that? And then make yeah, sure you say something. This. There we go, full screen. And now I can, I have a very basic control. And in this, I just used a makey makey box and some washers to, and then these are all clipped in the inside. We have, an, um, oh, a, guide have a guide on how to build that. this. Mm -hmm. um, but there, I can move my cat around the freeway. And later on, I can program in cars that are going to be going past at different speeds and create kind of a Frogger based game that is a cat in the freeway rather than a frog trying to get across the highway. Um, Can you so make a mouse that. for a second player? Sorry? Can you make a mouse oh, for a second player? Ooh, let's do that. I'm gonna, let's add a second player. So I'm gonna add another sprite. Sprite two, and let's see if there's a mouse. What else do cats, I have a cat. I should know the answer Good to chase this. chase the duck. Good chase. Ooh. I'm just saying little if girl. A the little girl could chase the cat. There's a pigeon. There's a pigeon. Oh, where did pigeon go? Go down, down. Oh, where'd it go? Painful. Oh, no. This is painful. I don't know where the pigeon went. Oh, here we I go. Wish... Oh, there it is. I wish they had a search. So there's a pigeon. It's going to show up right in the middle. Well, that's a big pigeon oh. compared to a cat, but that's okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to actually set simulator keys for player two. And I'm going to change them to W, down would be S, so W-A-S-D. Mm -hmm. A is left, right is D. And then I'm just going to change these to F and G. And then... And he's doing that because the makey makey on the back of it, you have W-A-S-D. Yeah. Um, and then player two... It's move also move with buttons. My sprite too with buttons. But we what we've done is that we've mapped set player two to those keys. And so I since I don't have anything hooked up to the back of the makey makey, I can now move this pigeon around and I can use Will you full screen pigeon. again? Just so it's easier to see the game. Thank and you. I can move the pigeon around with my WASD and I can move my cat around nice. with the makey makey. With that was fast, you made a game really fast. 
So I'm going to shrink this back down. So again, if we look at the number of blocks here, you have a background, you have two sprites, and both of them being moved with controls with probably 10 blocks, less than 10 blocks. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can program in logic of what happens when those two things touch. Um, so the first game that we actually play uh, in workshops and things like that with people is you build an essentially a tag game um, where you can have two players playing tag um, or you can have one of them just following you and you have to stay away from it, uh, kind of keep away type game. So that's that's kind of the first game that we explore with Make Code um, and Makey Makey. But that's only half of it. The other half is what type of controllers do I make for my games? And that's the main focus for us at Makey Makey. And I'm going to Colleen, I'm going to jump back to the slides unless yeah. you have any. You wanna... While you jump back to the slides, we have a question from Bob that's that I don't know how you're going to answer. Well, I sort of know how you're going to answer it. He says that they use make code a lot for microbit and circuit playground. And is there any way that, you know, this extension we move to that to those make code tools? Because it would be really cool to build a makey makey controller that could drive an RC car with a microbit brain. Right now, there's no. There's no clear way. I'm going to say that because there's there's yeah. never not a way to do something, but there's no simple way for right now for you to be able to kind of plug in Make Code Arcade into other hardware that's using Make Code, the other version of Make Code for hardware. Um, there are some some possibilities out there, but they're because you're downloading the project to yeah. the make code and a circuit playground and they don't they're no longer have a communication with the keyboard. Correct. Correct. So all that to answer, not right now, but from a learning perspective, your students would be able to transition to make code arcade like that because it is yeah. all of the logic, all of the structure blocks, everything is the same. It's just now they're going to be able to use it from a programming hardware perspective to building visual games. And I this is this is a, also a non-answer for make code, but you can if you have Hummingbird, Snap, they use Snap. Snap actually you can control Hummingbird robotics with Mickey Mickey because um, the Hummingbird still does connect back to the keyboard. So I have built a um, RC controller for an egg drop project once when I was in the workshop with Gary and Sylvia for from Invent to Learn. So it was really fun. And Bob, one of the things, uh, thank you for being grac gracious with us in terms of the, the answers, <laughs> but I've also been in that situation in the classroom where for my physical computing stuff and game design, I, I've been having, I was like having to teach like four different programming environments, depending on what my students were doing. And the wonderful thing that, that, I, that I really like about make code is that I can start them on make code and they can program games. They can program hardware. They can program different hardware. Even if you don't have a, a micro bit, you can program other hardware with make code. So there's all of these, they can do all the same things and stay within this ecosystem, software ecosystem in terms of a platform, which the learning then is just a, it's a linear growth rather than having to like go back and blink something or do something new every time you change products in the classroom. It's also pretty amazing that like that one day you sat down and churned out like 10 make code games that were pretty awesome. Like right away, the make code arcade games compared to what it would take me all day in scratch to make something that looked like that. So. Yeah. It, and it's, I mean, the, both platforms have their pluses and minuses. There's things in scratch that are a lot easier to do than, it, than make Yeah, they're, set, make they're different as, projects. You're not really yeah. doing the same projects. You're not going to make, I mean, you might make Pong, but you're not going to make like a lot of these games in scratch. Yeah. All right, let's look at the, the, can you do the next slide so I can show I the am. kayak, Boom. The kayak yeah. simulator. I want everyone to know this was Derek's idea. Um, and that I made this video with my daughters when it was 100 degrees outside. So as fun as was, my job looks. It was my idea, but man, I got in trouble. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I, all of a sudden, Colleen was like, you know, I have to go outside and it's 110 degrees outside to be sitting <laughs> in a kayak, not in water. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Am I playing this, Colleen? Yeah, at least, right. at least the beginning of it. Can you make it big? Oh, I can't hear Is it. Sound working? No, there it is. 
So basically, I'll just talk over her anyway. You're basically take a pool noodle, make the ends conductive. It's the same way you would make, you know, any other makey makey projects. You just go to the beginning. They don't have to watch the whole make it part or the end. Go to the beginning or the end. All right, we'll go to the end. Yeah. So then you make some earth pads that you put out on the side. And that's, so what happens is the left side of the pool needle pool noodle is left and the right side's right and then we just have earth on the ground um the literal ground <laughs> and that's it then you can just paddle left and right to move left and right in the make code game which is super fun so this is actually a crazy easy controller um looks super cool and really fancy but all you're really doing is is tapping left and right and you don't have to have a kayak you could do it with a cardboard box doesn't have to be the kayak um, unless you want it to be. And let me put a link for that one. And then we also made a Dig Dug style controller. And then um, this, oh, this yeah. game, the kayak game has oh, yeah, the two, kayak play, game. two players, right? So I can, you can play it with a friend. And one of the, so one of the things that I was trying to talk Colleen into doing instead of doing it outside was just to do it like on a table. Yeah. Right? So like if you're in a classroom where you have, um, you know, the two person type tables, just have students sit on the tables and do the same thing on a table. It gives them an opportunity to sit on the table, which you probably never want them to do. Um, but hey, rules are to be broken. So have them sit on the table in kayak um, that way. So that's again. So yeah, the ahead, game, on. I was just going to say where the game is. We actually, the our friends at Code Ninjas um, made the paddle skedaddle game. Uh, to go with this controller. So uh, if you you have to fill out a form and kind of give them your name, and then you'll be able to just go right to their paddle skedaddle game and start playing it and learn how it's made so that you can make your own version. Super fun. It actually was really fun to play. It just isn't fun to build in 110 degree heat. <laughs> but we did better on the next video. It was um, maybe 100 that day. We found a little more shade. Uh, so the dug. second, yeah, the second, project is dig dug and i thought it'd be really fun to step forward and back to, to do a d-pad style like dance like i said about dance dance um and derek was saying how cool it'd be to have a shovel he was really into shovel and being earth and my 13 year old daughter actually came up with the idea of wrapping around you might get to where she's doing that yeah stay right there wrapping this hvac tape around the d-pad so that every time you move because you the way you play this game is to like press up and space to shovel down. So like that's how you go down and dig dug. And you press right and space to dig down. And so we made space go all around the D-pad so that any direction you're facing, you can dig to go down or dig to go left or dig to go right. Um, this is actually really, really fun to play this way. Even more fun than the kayaking. I'll also, play. I think Colleen's kids are gonna send me some like horrible piece of mail or something like that. I don't that. know. They might exactly. grow up just like they they enjoy it. Just they enjoy spending time with me. Come on, dude. It's fun. Then, there's, then there's Derek, who's like, you know, this coworker that comes up with the crazy ideas for us to build. One year during COVID, I made them dress up as a unicorn. They loved that. And we tried to we played the game. There's some unicorn flash game. Can you play it now? Nice. I'll I'll look it up. I'll send it to you. Perfect. Yeah, that was it. That's everything. We went That's a little over everybody. Sorry, it. we tried to do it short and we went a little over. And I feel like, Colleen, a lot of our conversation questions that we had for the end, um, we kind of answered throughout the, the webinar. So we're good there. Um, you want to talk about some of the other webinars coming up, Colleen, as well as oh, our certified yes, educator course? Okay, well, I had to share my unicorn, the unicorn post. So it's in chat now if you want to see it. Um, we do have one more certified educator course coming up. You can stop the screen, I think. Um, stop your screen screen share. Um, we have one more certified educator course coming up um, October 18th, right? Yep. And um, that's actually the last one for 2022. And then we're going to be doing the monthly in 2023. Again, we'll just do them in spring. We like to take a break in summer. We did the emphasis. Pathfinders Foundation, shout out to Carrie, who's on the call. I saw her on here. Um, she was one of our lovely participants who who really has great ideas about using making making control of students. Um, if you know any music teachers, and maybe you have a music teacher at your school, that, or maybe you are one, 
um, and you want to think about using Makey Makey in the music classroom, um, October, the first week of October, I think it's October 8th. We put that one on the site, right? Let me look. October 6th is Music is Bananas. And so um, a gentleman in Florida wrote a book called Music is Bananas, and he has an educator guide about how to teach with Makey Makey um, in the music classroom. And so that'll be October 6th. It's really fun. And there's one more on here you can't see that'll, that I'll have posted by the end of tomorrow, at least. October 20th uh, will be uh, a game design challenge actually with Make Code Arcade. So we're talking with some folks in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who led an entire full day, um, a full day game institute where kids made games in Make Code Arcade and then created controllers with Makey Makey. So that is going to be really, really fun. So that is all we have lined up for you. Sorry, someone asked, asked me a question. <laughs> Are you answering it? Uh, yes. So um, yeah, so we'll, here, we'll get this recording out to everyone who signed up. We'll also have the slides on the blog post that was about the webinar. So we'll have the recording and the slides all in one spot. And we're just excited to see what you make with Make Code Arcade and Makey Makey yep. and see how this kind of changes the game because I think it makes things a little different and it's gonna be really fun. Perfect. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. Yeah. Thanks everybody there, for coming. Are there any other questions? I just wanna, as people are, you know, people are saying thank you, which is great, but uh, we wanna make sure- <laughs> If you have a question, just let us know. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm, I'm going to, if you have a question, you can stay on, but I'm at least going to disconnect this from YouTube. So um, again, our next webinar will be October 6th. Music is bananas. And then we'll have another one October 20th.